As coronomid pupa begin to stage above the bottom prior to emergence, they are often a dull gunmetal or pewter color as they have not yet generated enough gas for their final ascent. My variation of John Kent's Guns and Roses is an excellent choice under these conditions. Make sure you have these materials on hand. All right, so let's tie the Guns and Roses variant. Um, good friend John Kent ties a fly called the Guns and Roses, just deadly fly. Um, as he improved my chromie, maybe I can joke with John that I've improved his uh, Guns and Roses. We always joke with each other. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi 1120, number 12 in this instance. I've slid a 332nd black nickel bead onto the shank, narrow end towards the hook eye. I'm going to push that out of the way. For the body of the fly, I'm tying it in rusty brown, MFC rusty brown thread, and that's to match the um, wing pads at the end of the fly. The rest of the time, this thread is buried underneath, so you never see the color. So we're just going to get it started. Get a little bit of a thread foundation, and then back up to the hook eye. And we're going to tie in the gills. And the gills are... Spirit River UV2 Sparkle Yarn. This line, this yarn really pops underwater. You could also use um, Uni Stretch uh, Floss as well. Very popular material. It works equally well. I've cut off a little section and just to reduce bulk so the bead can slide over, I'm just going to take and maybe strip away a third of this off of one side just to reduce it down a little bit. You can moisten it. One of the reasons I like to use this material as well instead as, as well as its uh, a vivid white sparkle down there is it compresses. So a lot of the other materials often don't compress under thread pressure. This does so it helps the bead get over it. So we're just going to slide this down. I'm pulling on it and I'm going to secure this down onto the shank just past the hook point. I don't want to be at the hook point because it'll obviously sever the thread a lot of times and I'm just going to come in and trim this on a bit of an angle. Get those little errant fibers out of the way and then carry on and this is helping just build a little subtle taper into the front third of the body and then we're just going to come in whip finish disengage and trim the thread and this is a step you would do if you were trying in production you're doing a dozen of these things you gill the hooks as I call them now we just take our bead and if we've done it right it should slide over nicely and it does reattach our tying thread onto the shank and secure it down. And if I hold this thread up, you'll notice that the thread from the bobbin slides against this tag end and falls right adjacent to the previous wrap. And this will help build some nice smooth taper, no lumps and bumps. And then once we're satisfied, we're onto the shank, then we can trim away the excess. And we're just going to carry the tying thread down just to put some traction on the shank. And I just go about a 45 degree angle. See, that's about 45 degrees. That's sort of my stop point. And then we're just going to come forward up to the rear of the bead. Now we're going to tie the ribbing in. Now John, on his original, uses micro stretch tubing, I believe, a great product from Hairline. Um, I'm just going to use, in um, wine, I believe is the color, or mahogany brown. I'm just going to use some wine holographic tinsel. It gives you the same similar look. And this is size small. And I'm just going to hold that holographic tinsel up along the near side of the, the fly as best I can. Pull it down a little bit and then secure it. Open turns all the way down the side of the shank. That's where I like to do it. You can also secure it along the underside as well. It's up to you. Right down to the base. And then for the body, um, to give it that gunmetal gray color, the original material was Flashaboo coloration. It's called Gunmetal Gray or Blue Steel number 6916. 
I've also found another material that looks just as equally uh, attractive, kind of a bluish gray tinge, and it's this craniac metallic flash in the tube. And I get it through a Montana fly. That is the color code you want there 011HL, 011 Hotel Lima. That's what you want. So we've taken two strands, I've moistened them between my lips to get them to stick together. I'm just going to come in and grab those ends and secure them up the shank. So we've got the body material tied in. Anytime you're using flashaboos or other similar materials, they're not the most uh, durable of materials. So to help add durability, prior to wrapping the body up, I'm going to coat that thread underbody with some brushable super glue right here. The pages, um, cra uh, crazy glue brand, uh, Loctite, whatever you can find. And then we're just going to gather those two uh, strands of the craniac body material. And we're just going to wind them, close touching, adjacent turns, making sure we cover up. And we're just going to, so don't be in a hurry to go forward. You notice I kind of wrap these almost vertically. And I continually moisten my fingers, not to the point that I can't grip anything, but just so when I'm sliding those moistened fingers along the material, it helps gather and keep them together. And we're just going to wind this up the shank right to the tying thread. Right up to the back of the bead. Tie it off. A couple wraps over top. A couple in front to lock it in place. Come in with my Dr. Slicks. Give it a trim. So when John ribs the fly, he actually ribs the fly using his stretch tubing first and works the flashaboo in between it. And this is so he can keep the coloration of the maroon thread he uses when he's tying the fly to show through and give that kind of maroon um, tone um, to the body ribbing. Using the uh, non-translucent uh, holographic mylar achieves, or I'm trying to achieve the same effect. So I'm just going to start ribbing. I'm going to put a couple of wraps at the base of the tail just to form a little bit of a butt. And then I'm just going to open up and try and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to give me nine body segments. Not critical. I would recommend just get into a rhythm with your ribbing and go for it. Just looking for relatively even ribbing. And then we're just going to tie that off. A couple wraps in front. And then all we're going to do is build up that fluff out of there. We're just going to build up a nice rusty brown thread thorax that goes no further back than the length of the bead. And you want to build your thorax up evenly and don't be too aggressive in building the ramp up to the bead. If you get too aggressive, the, the um, thread will just fall down during the whip finish process and it will all be loose and unkempt and ungathered. Kind of like how that looks, so I'm just going to come in. And you don't need to do a lot of three, four turn whip finish is fine. Pull that nice and tight. And then we're going to trim our gills about the same length as the bead. Brush them up a little bit, and now all that's left is to coat the body. And you could use super glue again, although I using the uh, UV resins. We'll just give that a nice coating. Just get it on there, and then we can take our dubbing needle and help further disperse it. I just kind of sweep it up, you know, go with the taper, roll it around, and when I'm happy with it turn on my light and cure the resin. So just sort of work that all the way around. It just takes a few seconds. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but those white gills really pop. So when you're working this fly down at depth where the light levels are low, it's going to pick up any ambient light down there and really reflect it back. And again, make this small delicate fly stand out in the sea of naturals that are emerging. You can have good success. So there you go. The finished Guns N' Roses variant. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. 
Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.